video, we're going to learn how to make a bingo board. Now, this particular bingo board is going to be for a baby shower. So you'll see here in column C, I've already chosen what words I want to fill my board with. I have 40 words all related to babies. Then the next thing I want to do is each of these words will need some kind of unique identifier so that each of the words will be unique. So for lack of a better title, we're going to create a column called random numbers. And the unique identifier, we're going to let Excel choose that for us, and we're going to use the RAND formula. So equals RAND, open and close parentheses. Then I'm going to control C to copy and highlight the cells by each of the words. Choose enter, and then that will copy the formula down. Now, anytime we take an action, so for example, if we rewrite bottle, you'll see that the numbers in the RAND formula regenerate. So this will be really useful to us in a minute. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a board, just a five by five board. I'm going to highlight my five by five area. Then I'm going to come up here and add borders. All I did was choose all borders. Then I'm going to black out my middle square because I want a free space. You can use any color you want, but I'm going to choose black for this exercise. Then we want this board to reference our baby words. So the first cell is going to just simply equal the first word. Then I'm going to copy that down. Again, just control copy and paste. And I'm going to repeat that for the next column. Whoops. And you'll see the reason this one ended in C7. So the next one starts in C8. And I'm going to keep doing that for all of them. The reason I'm doing it this way is I want this to be really, I don't, we should have to create macros for this. They might help move things faster, but you also need to know more Excel programming. And that really is out of reach for so many people. So right now we're using more um, lower level formulas. So we're going to finish this up. And there's our words. One, two. Then we want to, I'm going to create three more tabs of these so we can create three boards. Now you see where my cursor is over top of sheet one. I'm right clicking on that, choosing move or copy. Create copy, move to end, then going to that new tab, right clicking again, choosing rename, and changing this to sheet two. Now, this isn't necessary for this, but I really think renaming them and having all the names be similar really helps as, as you move along with this bingo game. And you'll see why in a minute. Now I've created my three boards. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that each of these boards that we're going to reference is unique. So place your cursor anywhere in the random numbers or word, then go to the data tab, choose sort, make sure my data has headers, is checked off, and you want to sort by random numbers. And you see how everything changed here as a reference cells changed. And then we're going to repeat that for each one of the tabs. So again, data sort, random numbers, and one more time, sort, random numbers, and now we have that. Then I also have another board set up. Now this is the one that will end up printing. So you'll see the cells are bigger. I've already resized them simply by dragging and dropping to the cell size that I want. And the next thing I want to do now is just reference our sheets. So this first cell, we're going to reference. Whoops, I have two equal signs here. Yes, I want to accept this correction. And then I just want to copy this over the whole sheet. We're going to again black out our middle square. And then the next thing we're going to do, this is a little bit tedious, but we want to make each of these absolute values. And you really, it's tedious, but you're only going to do this on the first um, board that we create. After that, 
You can create how many ever boards you need to, and you'll see how it's a much simpler find and replace. And also, if you're not sure what I'm doing here, I'm simply putting my cursor on each cell. I'm airing over to the next cell. I'm choosing, choosing F2 so that I'm inside the cell data, and then F4 to make it an absolute reference. Now, what an absolute reference means is that if we copy this over, normally Excel will auto-scroll as it copies to the next thing. And if you're not familiar with that, just take a look Hang on one second at this formula here. See where my cursor is on bottle? See how it says sheet one, F6, the next cell, sheet one, G6, because it went from column F to G. Same thing if you go down to the next um, lower cell, it's sheet one, F7, above it was F6. So we're gonna make this absolute, so when we copy, the cells will keep that same formula. And you will see why in just a minute. I'm almost done here. And again, there's fancier ways of doing this, but I, I really want this to be something that's easily done by a novice even. Okay, so now we have this. Then it's just a simple copy paste. So, well, actually we're gonna do a paste special, but you'll see. When I highlight this area, and I highlight the cell, the row above it, just so that we're gonna have some separation between each of the boards. So highlight the area you want to copy, choose copy, scroll down, and just below it, we're gonna paste special. And we're going to choose, we wanna do the formulas, we wanna do, actually wanna do the formulas. Oh. So then we want to copy it again for our third board. And there you go, you've done it three times. Now right now, all we did was copy the same data over. But remember how we labeled these sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. Now we're gonna just replace. So here is our first sheet. And scroll to your next sheet. Highlight everything. And we're gonna choose on the keyboard Control H. And we're gonna change where it says sheet one. This will now say sheet two. And what that will do, referencing all that, we made 24 replacements. This is now referencing sheet two. So pacifier baby bottle, pacifier baby bottle. Then we wanna repeat the same thing for the next board. Want to change sheet one, this time to sheet three. And that's our bingo board. Now the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna to want to print these and you can format these how you want. I'm simply going to highlight the boards, go to my page layout and choose my print area. And because these will be different boards between each one, you'll want to also insert a page break. So you see here under page layout, insert page break. And you'll want to do this between each board. And there you go. This should be your bingo board. And if you want to add any headers to it, print titles, go to your header footer. You can do in this section, baby bingo. We want to make this really big. So we highlight this, go to our font, and let's pick something. and a print preview, and it'll look something like this. You can mess with it, you can mess with your margins. Let's see, if we make the margins, make the top margin maybe one inch, an inch and a half, and we'll make the header 0.55. Let's see what that looks like. Looks a little bit better. What else do we want to do? Let's 
go into our margins again, and this is under the page setup option down here at the bottom. And let's center the board. Maybe not like that. Go back to our page setup. And let's see, let's not center vertically. There, better. And you can make this bigger or smaller, but you'll see how all of your pages now look exactly the same. And that is your bingo board. You can format how you want, add whatever colors, images you want, but this gives you a basic bingo board game without any fancy coding or macros or programming. Have fun.